guys welcome and welcome back welcome all welcome back to this channel my name is Tanoletu this is my space and in today's video you guys I'm super excited because I have achieved one of the goals I set out to achieve this year and that is to read through the entire Bible and now I'm here to tell you what I've learned of course I have not sucked in and soaked in all the good knowledge and wisdom that is in the Bible. I don't understand everything that I read, but just to share with you guys and encourage you if you are, you know, setting the goal to accomplish this as well, to do this as well, and you are wondering, okay, what's so important about reading the Bible? What do I get out of this? This is my Bible. I have a few different versions, but this is the NLT version. It's the version I've had since I was in primary school. So that's like before I was even a teenager. Um, I had it when I was, I think, 11 or 12 years old. That's when I got this Bible and I only started reading it for real last year. It is a girl's study Bible. Because I had gotten used to reading this Bible when I was at church and everything, I kind of got used to its language. And so that's why I decided that in this Bible reading challenge, I would read this copy of the Bible. Um, so basically what made me want to do this is that I kind of knew some of the basic principles that are in the Bible and some of the things that other people don't really know just because I grew up in a Christian home, my mom read the Bible to us, we had family devotions and stuff, but I never took those scriptures into mind and into heart, so I was never able to actually remember them. I just knew that, oh, the Bible says that you shouldn't have sex before marriage, or the Bible says that it's not good to you know, have a bad relationship with food or to look down on people, but I had no idea where that was written. And so that's why I was like, okay, I want to read the Bible. And also I was hearing a lot of this rumor that if you read the Bible, you actually get to learn what is close to God's heart. You get to learn about God's character. So it's like, okay, I'm getting into this relationship with this guy named Jesus. So I want to know his character. I want to know what kind of a person he is. And if the Bible is going to help me with that, might as well just read it. I started reading the Bible at the beginning of this year, January, and I finished reading the Bible in September because I was just that invested. And thank God for that because um, there were times in like August, in July, that I was just giving up and I was just like, yo, this is taking long. Um, can I go back to watching series? But then, oh, yeah. Okay, you guys know how it is. Something that motivated me to read the Bible is that I knew that there's some history in the Bible and some romance. <laughs> and me loving history and caring just a little bit about romance, I was like, okay, at least we're going to get to those juicy parts. And I'm just going to have to read through these genealogies and be faithful, man. And my treat will be when I get to the history parts. Little did I know that I would find so much value in the Bible that goes far beyond the history and things like that. But let's just get into these things that I learned while reading the Bible this year. The first thing is that the Bible, it is fun to read. It's so much fun to read because it basically has, as I said, it has so many different genres, history, prophecy, you know, action, romance. I'm telling you guys, the story of, of Isaac meeting his wife for the first time, it's so cute. It's better than any Hollywood um, romance. The Bible is so much fun and it makes a lot of sense as you read it chronologically. Now I know when I got to parts where um, it was talking about how God was instructing certain people or certain groups or a certain person to go out and fight against a certain other person or places where God was saying okay go and conquer these people, go and kill these people and you know leave no one or you know, things like that. I could have easily stopped reading, but 
as I continued to read, it made more and more sense. And I've seen a lot of people who stopped believing in God, in Jesus, or didn't even stop believing, but stopped following him because they were like, I cannot co-sign to this type of behavior. Um, but as you continue to read the Bible, you actually find out why God did those things, why they're significant that it was even mentioned because God is telling the story. He doesn't have to mention that he made that command, but he tells us for a reason. And so it makes so much sense. And there's just so much to learn, even from the things that are difficult to swallow. The way that I read the Bible was not through a Bible plan. I know that the Bible app has Bible reading plans and all of that, but I decided to read it chronologically. So from Genesis right through to Revelation. Now, during this time, I did do separate Bible study on certain books, but um, as like just reading as if I was reading another novel, like maybe Pride and Prejudice, I started at the first page and went right to the last page um, without studying them. And then I had my separate study time where I would choose a book or choose a chapter or choose a topic. Another thing I learned is that reading the Bible is an experience, you guys. As I said, I love history. And I know most of you watching this probably fell asleep or still fall asleep in history class. But I've learned that I tend to cling more to experiences than I do to lectures. Um, so feeling like what I'm reading or what I'm listening to is taking me to a place or a time helps me to understand more what it's saying because I'm trying to I try to learn to empathize with those characters and to be like a fly on their walls and so in that way I also learned to kind of have a general idea or to kind of learn to remember how long each book in the Bible is. And so, yeah, another thing that I was not expecting um, is that the book of Jeremiah started to become my favorite Old Testament book. I want to read the note that I wrote here. It, I said, I want to be like Jeremiah, filled with the spirit of God and understanding God's love for humans, for their souls and the importance of saving those souls. Reading through Jeremiah and Lamentations showed me my selfishness and sin of not talking to people about Jesus just because I'm scared of being awkward or them not liking it. Everyone is looking for God even if they don't know it. So Jeremiah, man, um, I learned a lot from the book of Jeremiah. Um, the fact that he was truly human and you could see that in the fact that God is calling him and he's like, okay, he grew up being taught about the fear of God. So he knows if God talks to you, you listen. So he did that. But then he also wrestled at times with this thing of, okay, people are being mad at me because I'm saying what God wants me to say. And people are hurting me for saying what God wants me to say. So let me just not say what God wants me to say. But then he couldn't keep it inside of him. He had to share the good news. He had to share what God was saying. He had to share the warnings from God and all of that, even if it meant trouble, physical trouble for him. And so um, I want to be, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to feel the hurt. Um, certified coward over here but i want that result and if that means going through what he went through shab. um i want to serve god as well and i was just so encouraged by the story of jeremiah as people we tend to read the bible as black and white i really touched on this when i was talking about the genocide type of scriptures um people even atheists or any other religion subscribing person will say that they want justice they want justice but then they hate god or they don't want god or they're against god jesus not knowing that god is actually the one who is justice he is just so people will use those scriptures where god sends out someone to go and kill another person or another group of people and they'll say that God is evil but they don't understand that before that scripture is 
um, mentioned, there's a lot of mention of the wrong that those people have done to each other and to even people outside of their own groups. And there's a lot of wrong that those people continue to do. And there's a lot more that those people could have done if God hadn't sent that type of response. The Bible uses humans as an example because it is speaking to human beings. And it shows how we are repetitively selfish. Um, and yet God always responds in a just way. He wouldn't be just if he was allowing us to continue in doing things that are not good, like killing and raping and all of that. Of course, God has to do something to disrupt our comfort with the evil that we do to each other. I loved learning that. It challenged a lot of my own thoughts and my own beliefs on how perfect and righteous and, you know, good person I am because I got to realize that I'll be saying justice, you know, I'm all for justice, I'm woke, but then I won't be as mad when a white person gets killed as I am when a black person gets killed. So yeah, I got to learn a lot about myself and a lot about God and a lot about other people as well. Another interesting development that I had while reading the Bible is that I realized that I actually want to, at some point, um study the bible actually like take a seminary course or something like that not to be a pastor or anything but just to learn to read the bible more and better maybe to learn hebrew maybe because i've seen so much of you know the richness of um reading the bible in in different ways as you go deeper into reading the bible and learning how to read the bible you stop reading stories like the story of, of david and goliath as if you are david and your problems are goliath you actually see it for what it is giving glory to god and how god was preparing someone who would be in the lineage of jesus and all of that you know you see god glorified in that story reading the bible taught me especially reading the gospels it taught me that I have a desire to be a student, to be a disciple of Jesus. Disciple means to be a follower of, to be a student, um, to be someone who is learning to copy the behaviors of their teacher. And so I want to be a disciple of Jesus um, because Jesus sent us to make disciples and not Christians. If you read in Acts, you'll see when the disciples of Jesus are called Christians for the first time and you get to learn what it means to be a Christian, what the word means. Christian means little Christ. Yes, that's amazing as well. I love being a Christian, but there's a, there's um, the meaning of disciple that gets lost when as Christians we don't learn that Jesus called us to be disciples. And so when I saw this, I was like, okay, I want to be a disciple actually because I didn't have an understanding of what this was really this is the note that i wrote on being a disciple and just to you know make a mind shift in my mind that i need to be more like jesus and not just yeah um i wrote so christians get saved and continue trying to be the best version of themselves with jesus and a good example the disciples of jesus are followers and students of jesus they get baptized in the name of the father son and holy spirit and receive the holy spirit who then leads them into all truths so they can make more disciples another thing that i never expected to develop um, while reading the Bible is to have a true love for Jewish people and not just Jewish people but people all over the world. <laughs> There's the automatic I guess hate for Jewish people that is you know popular in the media and all of that anti-semitism but I actually developed a love for the Jewish people and you know one day I'd like to introduce even one of them to Jesus the Messiah because he is he, he when he came in the human body he came as a Jewish man I also learned that the Bible talks a lot about divorce sexuality and the fear of God and usually we only have like one scripture to back up 
each of these things but actually while reading the bible i learned that there are so many more scriptures there's an abundance of scriptures talking about this issue and you know things like divorce and sexuality and the fear of god should not even be a debate because it's said so many times and explained so many times that we kind of know what god's stance is on that and so god has worked on my mind and my heart to accept what he says about these issues and um to believe them as well and to even teach them and so i learned that as you get to know god and as you read the bible you stop thinking that god is being unreasonable in his laws and his precepts and his principles um just like the psalm says i take delight in your laws this one is a long one so i'm going to read it once again it says above all god loves us so much he modeled it first by giving the law which is which allows us to see our sin so we can understand why we need jesus a friend of mine said that perfectly and then he models it by having his prophets display what he goes through and feels like jeremiah and hosea for example then he brings jesus his only son himself incarnate to die for us and show us what love is he loves us so much that is something i got to learn throughout the bible how much god loves this little creature called a human being this creature made of dirt God loves us so much, you guys, and he's done so much to show that, even in the fact that he decided and chose to save us even before we wanted him. I always say this about myself, that God chose me before I chose him, that God was pursuing me before I even wanted to look at him. Um, God has done so much in my own life to show me that he loves me even when i didn't want him before i got saved while i was getting saved and after i got saved god has continually proven his love displayed his love for me and i learned that even in the bible at times i did try to get through some books like as quickly as i could just racing through them because i was thinking okay there are this many books left there are this many months left in the year i need to finish all of them quickly i can't go over this year without finishing them but then eventually i learned to rest in the fact that i need to read the bible in a way where i am actually learning what i'm reading and not just you know looking at the words and just flipping through just to turn the page that's the goal now i learned to actually read with understanding and by some miracle i got through it by september so i don't even know what, what i was stressed about i learned that there are a lot of things in the bible that some christians either completely disregard you know or they avoid or they don't believe or agree with and i learned that the reason we have the holy spirit is partly because we're not gonna agree with everything that god says because our flesh our flesh is naturally against god i say this a lot our flesh is naturally against god and so we have the holy spirit who allows us to submit ourselves to what god says and be like I, I remember when i was reading a certain scripture on homosexuality and another one on modesty i remember being like god i don't believe this but help me to believe it help me you know to trust what you say and literally after that god was showing me different ways what he meant and why he was saying what he was saying and he was showing me the wisdom in what he was saying and after that i actually believe everything that he said on those topics and so if you're a christian and you come across something in the bible you don't agree with which you'll probably come across a lot because you live in the 21st century where everything is permissible and you know everything that is bad is considered good and everything that's good is considered bad 
you will come across a lot of things in the Bible that you do not agree with. The key is in asking God for wisdom. And if you ask God for wisdom, he is generous and will give you wisdom in abundance. He will teach you, he will help you, he will transform your mind on the topic and you will actually come to believe what he says on that. Um, there are a lot of things I am also struggling with right now or things that I don't even know that I need to learn. But I have faith that God is going to teach me those things as I come to them and he will transform my mind to be able to believe and have peace with what he is saying. So this is the final thing I need to say about the Bible. I will read the Bible over and over and over and over again in the life, in my lifespan. <laughs> um, it is the true word of God. Okay, he wrote messages for us and I'm, I'm going to commit to learning to cherish it. I'm going to commit to learning to cherish these words, these messages. And I'm so certain that the Bible has so many, you know, seeds that as we plant them in our minds and in our hearts, we will grow. It's just amazing that we get to have the word of God so accessible to us. And so I hope you are feeling encouraged after watching this video to go ahead, you guys, go ahead and read your Bible. It's so much fun. Um, a lot of people always ask, where do I start reading? Um, which book do I start with? Start at the beginning. <laughs> Don't make it too troublesome for yourself. Start at the beginning, start at Genesis. Or, you know, if you are so excited, which we all should be, start at Matthew and start reading about Jesus, his life, and then go ahead and start with Romans, because Romans, why am I saying it like that? <laughs> and then Proverbs, and then go over to Genesis and read everything else um personally i started with proverbs that's just how the lord moved my heart and it was so beneficial for me because i'm someone who grew up reading the bible not reading the bible but hearing about the bible hearing about jesus and i thought i knew who he was and i basically was thinking and believing that I'm a righteous person and that God is boring and, you know, his things are too troublesome. He's going way too far with his laws. But as I read Proverbs, it opened my heart to actually see that God is truly wise and that, you know, his thoughts are truly way above my thoughts and his understandings and his desires and everything are way above mine. And so it prepared me actually to read Matthew and meet and fall in love with jesus in the gospels so yeah i hope you guys are encouraged i hope this video was helpful to you um thank you for watching and i will see you in my next one bye